All right, let's look at how you light one of these gas burners. So this is a Tyrrell burner. It has controls for the flow of gas. That's this right here. I've got it closed all the way. I can open it all the way too. And in fact, I will open it in preparation for um, lighting the burner. You'll notice when it's closed, the valve moves more um, this way. When it's open, that means moving the valve more this way, away from the body of the burner, in this direction. So this is more open as it's allowing gas to go through. So I'll open it a fair amount. I'll turn it a few times. Let's see, how many would that be? One, two, three, four, five or so half turns, which would be about uh, two full rotations of this thing. It doesn't take much to get the gas all the way on. Um, this right here is the air control call. You'll see it's currently in the open position. Let's change that so that it's in the closed position. I don't know how easy it is to see right there, but you see now the air cannot get past this to mix with the gas inside. If I turn it the other way to open it, you can see now how there's some space in there that allows the air to enter and mix with the gas. So when you light a gas burner, such as a turbo burner, you want to make sure that at the beginning, this air vent is totally closed and the gas vent starts as open. So let's move that to where you can see it. There we go. I begin by, now that this gas valve is open, I can open this gas valve, you'll hear it too, and strike, and that lights the gas burner. So this is the color of an inefficient flame. In order to get the efficient flame, the gas valve being about as open as it is, let's now change the airflow by adding air. You'll notice the distinct change in color. I'm opening, 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 but it won't open any further. And I don't have a good inner blue cone showing up here against the background of the tabletop. So uh, given that, Let's do this. I can't use, I can't get, use, using this thing, I can't get a good inner blue cone. So now I'm gonna go back to the gas control again. See, I've got it turning on the bottom and I'm going to reduce the gas flow. And as I reduce the gas flow, let's see, there we go. The inner blue cone, the bright blue inner blue cone with its hottest part right there at the top becomes much better to find. You can even see it right there in the video, right around there. So now that gives me to the point where I'm ready to work with glass. So what I'm going to do is take a tube like this and I'm going to fire, start by fire polishing the end. Let's see, uh, this is kind of a messy end right here. So maybe I'll start by fire polishing the slightly cleaner end. Um, in the flame and right here at the top of the innermost or the inner blue cone at the top I'll begin with that I am rotating it notice how I'm using one hand to steady it and the other hand to turn the glass this is the technique for how you go about fire polishing it in order to make it smoother and less likely to cut that was only a few seconds and it's already done it's fire polished and um, I know it's fire polished because when I look at it, as the light reflects off the edge, it's gone from being not reflective to now it's reflective and I can see very clear that it's smooth. Now, suppose I want to take that a little further. What if I want to melt it closed? I put it back in the flame and continue. It's the same process as what she would do for fire polishing. The only difference is with this, if you want to melt it all the way closed, you just keep on going just a little bit longer. I keep the rotation going. I can see it through the flame. Occasionally I'll do like this just to check on the progress, but for the most part, I want to make sure to keep it in the flame more than not. You can see that bright yellow flame. This glass is uh, sodium based, and so that's the, the sodium atoms are releasing that yellow color to the flame. Uh, as this continues, I'm seeing the tube is definitely closing up. Uh, I'm pausing just a moment because it bent in one direction, so I was letting it bend back in the other direction. But uh, at this point, it looks like it's pretty well closed. I'm just, I can see it. Uh, it may not be so easy to see in the on the camera, but here in person, I can definitely see the tube through the flame, and I can see that it's pretty well closed up. 
I see it bent a little bit, so maybe I'll keep it in the flame, let it, let gravity pull it down in the direction opposite of what it bent. This isn't strictly necessary, I'm just doing this for cosmetic purposes. That's relatively straight. I pull it out, I check it. I can see, maybe you can see too, the empty space there no longer goes all the way to the end. It pinches out and I have a solidly melted closed tube. So, here's what I'll do with that. There is this ceramic tile right here. I don't want this hanging off the edge. I don't want this touching the countertop because the countertop's gonna make it cool too fast and crack the glass. I don't want it hanging off the edge of the table because that's a safety hazard. Someone's gonna bump into it. So I do this. I let the hot part hang off the edge of the ceramic tile. That allows it to cool more slowly and therefore be less likely to crack. Once that's cool, by the way, I can fire polish the other end in the way that I showed earlier, and then that allow me to pour the oil and the glitter in and make the bubble wand. Now, as for this, you do need to deal with this flame now that you're done. And the way you deal with it is, uh, well, you've got to shut it down, of course. So what you do is you turn the flame off by turning off the gas right there. And once that's off, you need to do an additional safety measure. Proper shutdown procedure is you also turn off the gas by screwing the valve all the way in this direction. And then as a courtesy to the next person who's going to start this, you're going to want to close this. It's just a courtesy to the next person. They're going to need to close this anyway, so you might as well give my helping hand by doing it for them. Uh, this ensures with this closed, if someone accidentally turns on the gas, you won't fill the room with natural gas because it, this will prevent that gas from escaping into the room. All right, that's how you do it.